What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today is another installment of Macro Monday here on the channel, where I review a beer from a macro brewery or a macro-esque beer from a craft brewery, and the beer I'm reviewing today once again comes from Grupo Modelo, and they are headquartered in Mexico City, Mexico, and this is their Pacifico. So, this is a Mexican lager that comes in at 4.4% alcohol by volume, 18 IBUs at the time of review. This by bottle is approximately two and a half months old and it also has a best buy date of September of 2024 and we're about four and a half months away from that date so we should be more than good to go. So last spring and summer I reviewed a handful of Mexican loggers. I believe I reviewed Modelo Especial also Bohemia and Corona. And this year I'm gonna review some others that I have not reviewed. This is the first. I'm gonna to try to get my hands on some uh, Tecate, some Sol, maybe Dos Equis. We'll see, but uh, probably three or four uh, this year. And then at some point down the line, we're gonna start the whole beer style um, tournament. And one of the first styles is definitely gonna be Mexican lagers. And then I think the other uh, one I'm probably gonna do first is just porters, uh, but we're gonna to get to that at some point this year. I hope. I can't promise it, but I hope. Anyway, this one. I've had it a few times before. I don't remember much about it. Uh, so, yeah. We're gonna, I don't, I'm not going to say we're going into this one blind because that would be a lie. But uh, I haven't had this beer enough to be like, oh, yeah, that's Pacifico. Like, that's 100% what it tastes like. Like, we're going we're gonna to find out together. What I love, though, is the brown bottle. Um, so, you know, unlike the Coronas of the world and whatnot, uh, Modelo and all them. Um, no skunkiness. Shouldn't be. Anyway, we're going to pour it into the glass here. Do something like this. Try to get a decent head if we can here. I'm not gonna pour all of it. I, a lot of times when I don't pour all of it, it's tough to get an aroma because it's right to the top. You wanna get your uh, schnoz in there so you can get a little bit of the aromatic. So anyway, this pours out a beautiful looking, you know, that, that golden kind of yellow color. Uh, beautiful clarity has just, I'd say about a finger of a bright white, soap sudsy looking head, tons of carbonation. This does have the etching, the nucleation uh, to promote the carbonation. Hold it up to the light. And yeah, I mean, you can't really see, or I mean, you can see my hand through it. Um, it's, it's crystal clear. It's kind of what you expect out of a beer like this. So let's get a nose. Yeah, it smells like so many Mexican uh, lagers. Huh. And I say that, take that back a little bit. So yeah, this has that, you know, grainy kind of malt character, a uh, little bit of a corn, um, like a corn chip, like a tortilla chip. I get that a lot of times out of Mexican lagers, but I also get that a lot out of just like regular adjunct lagers, especially here in the States. It has, you know, like that corny vibe to it. Kind of like a uh, tortilla or, or, or like, like a Fritos corn chip, kind of like soaked in water. I know it doesn't sound appealing, but that's kind of what it smells like. But I'm getting a little bit of citrus in here. Like, you know, a lot of people associate limes with Mexican lagers, you know, put the you know lime in the Corona and whatnot. I get it. And then you see a lot of American breweries when they release a Mexican style lager, they'll a lot of times brew it with lime. So it makes sense. However, I'm getting a little bit more than just a lime, I'm getting like a little bit of a lemon lime, but also a touch of like a like a tangerine or a tangelo, something that has like a little bit of a juicy kind of zippy kind of aroma. That's, I mean, that's really it. It's, it's, it's again, that corn, that, that sweet graininess and some citrus, but it smells pretty good. It doesn't smell like, you know, it's, it's very inoffensive. Um, it smells like it's gonna be quite refreshing. So let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's something, there's some sort of like sweet citrus character. Yeah, so the body on this, lower side of medium body, higher side of light. It's not thin and watery, but it's definitely lighter because it's 4.4%. Um, so that's nice and appropriate. The mouthfeel, very crisp on the palate, effervescent, higher side of moderate carbonation. Somehow though, despite the uh, carbonation being quite strong and it being very crisp, it does have a smoothness on the palate as well. The taste simplistic, but well done. Rep front, grainy, sweet, um, corn chip soaked characteristics. Like that's what it is. It has that that corny kind of vibe to it. Sweet malt, sweet grain. That's kind of omnipresent. Dives underneath the palate, but it's always there. Halfway through the palate, well, I'd say about a third of the way to halfway through the palate. That's where I get that citrus. And again, yeah, a little bit of a lemon lime vibe. 
uh, but it has like the sweeter, like a little bit of like a tan, like a sweeter tangerine or like an orange, something with a little bit of more of a sweet citrus to it. Pithy as well, zesty, but a little bit sweeter um, than I'm accustomed to for uh, the style. And honestly, I don't get a lot of citrus outside of like a lemon or a lime in a lot of these um, Mexican lagers. So I think that's different and it's actually appreciated. No real hop character to speak of, if anything, like a very faint kind of grassiness on the back of the palate, but it, it's it's quite dry. It's like semi to full on dry, almost no bitterness, very mild, if any, but this is pretty dry. So it's sweet up front with that grainy kind of, you know, corn chip-esque uh, malt character, a little bit of that sweet citrus in the middle, but it dries out enough on the back end to be a very well balanced and super crushable. This is really well done for the style. Uh, is it my favorite of the bunch? I don't know. I, I mean, as I'm going through them all, I'll be honest with you, I think Bohemia is my favorite at this point. It's kind of the leader in the clubhouse if you're talking about uh, lighter colored Mexican lagers and not the darker ones. Uh, Modelo, uh, Negro would probably be up there as well if we went, you know, with a, with a not straight on just regular Mexican lagers. But uh, this, this isn't far behind um, those, honestly. This is really well done. I'm going to pour the rest in here now just because I already got my nose in there and, you know, <laughs> have basically reviewed this beer. 4.4%, you can't tell. Obviously, no skunkiness because it's in a brown bottle, so I don't have to worry about that. We'll do one more sip, and then I'll, I'll get into a rating. Yeah, I think the, the nice thing about this is it brings something a little bit unique to the table uh, for the style. It's a little bit different than the other ones I've had. And now, as I sit here, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I just took that last sip, right? Poured in the remnants. I'm almost getting like a... Like a um, a goza kind of feel or like a margarita where you get a little bit of like a, a lime-esque kind of salinity on my lips. Listen, I'm just saying what I'm saying. could be completely wrong, but after that, la let me go for, for another sip. Maybe I'm just bullshitting here. No. I don't know if it's pouring in the remnants, which shouldn't matter in a style like this, but I'm getting a little bit of like a limey, kind of like if you've ever had um, Tostitos, hint of lime, the uh, chips. Kind of like that. So it's like a tortilla chip with a hint of lime and a little bit of salt. That's what I'm kind of getting. This is almost like you, you had a Corona. You put a lime in it, but it's better. That's the way I look at it. So is this uh, like my favorite uh, Mexican lager? No, but it's not far off, like I said. So Pacifico, I am going to give this a beer right here. I'm going to give this a high 3.75, believe it or not. I'm going to go with 3.8. I think that's where this one lands. I forget what I... I think Bohemia is like in the four range for me. Same thing with uh, Modelo uh, Negra. They're up there. This isn't far behind, though. Like for an easy drinking beer that, you know, you could have this at a, a Mexican restaurant. You could have a poolside. You could have the beach, uh, barbecues, whatever. I could drink a ton of this and not get sick of it. It's very clean, too, on the palate. Like, extremely clean going down like there's yeah it's really good so i know a lot of you out there have recommended this one to me or uh when we're talking about different like mexican uh loggers a lot of you said like pacific i don't know if anyone said this was their favorite but they always said like oh this one's up there like number two or three and that's kind of where i'm feeling this is it the best for for what i'm looking for no is it close yes would i go back to this yeah price point availability though a little bit uh, steep. It's imported, so it makes sense. Um, this was uh, either 10 or 11 bucks a six-pack here in the West New York area, more specifically Buffalo, New York, and I think 12 packs were in like the $17, $18 range. So you're paying imported prices. Um, I think, again, I'd rather have Bohemia. I'd, I'd rather have uh, Modelo and Negro over this if I'm going for an imported Mexican beer. However, I think the price point is fair for what it is. And availability, I don't really know. I just know that I think this is imported by... Um, uh, imported by Crown Imports in Chicago. So I'm pretty sure you can get this all across uh, the U.S. Maybe harder to find in different areas, but I think for the most part, this is widely available. So really happy I reviewed this one, and uh, I'm going to try to get my hands on Tecate or Solnex and see if I can review those, you know, uh, before the end of spring, and then we'll probably review another couple in the summer. And uh, by that point, I should be up to like eight to ten different Mexican lagers, and maybe we'll start thinking about that beer-style tournament. Although, again, I think I'm going to do the porters first, so maybe I'll do the porters before that and then once i review everything then i'll uh do the tournament for this so if you've had this one before post in the comment section let me know what you think about it i know again a lot of you already said that this is like your number two or number three and i can totally see it i'm just kind of surprised by that citrus character and also that like that that limey kind of um you know salinity that i got at, towards the end and, and i'm wondering if that's still here i shit you not there's a little bit of like a lime 
and the salinity on it again it reminds me of the to tostitos hint of lime like but in beer form and i'm not mad at it so appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the beer patrol check back in probably three weeks or so for another macro monday installment and until then cheers <laughs>